Mary St. Lawrence in the celebration of this beautiful life of the earth. As we begin, I'd ask you to please stand and join us in our gathering song. It's number 945 in your books. I'm the Bread of Life, number 945. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. Before we begin this song, there will be some prayers that are said in the back of the church. So if you'll just kind of turn yourselves to the back of the church, and after that, we'll go right into the song. Do you want to do a Dear brothers and sisters, yeah, as we are celebrating the life of Europe, now yeah. let us the silence of all of no, our okay. Yeah. 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 Now let us begin the blessing ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the migrants of baptism, we are arrived with the Christ and rose with him to a new life. May she now share with him the eternal glory. In baptism, we have received the sign of the cross. May she all share in Christ's victory over sin and death.
Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant Vera, whom you have called out of this world. And because she put her hope and trust in you, command that she be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your <coughs> eternal reward. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and in their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if in the eyes of men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastise the little, they shall be greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Sponsor of the psalm this morning is taken from Psalm 23. I invite you to join me in the refrain, which I'll sing once for you. <coughs>
Please be seated. Time to breathe, you know. Thank you, Mary. Dear friends, first of all, I would like to express my heartfelt condolence to Rodney, the wife of Vera, and her two of her daughters, Sandal and Sanaya, and the relatives, the family members, the friends who have come here to celebrate the life of Vera. I don't need to so much talk about Vera because all of you, all of you who are here in this church, knew her very personally, and the Vera has made some sort of a difference in all of your, all of your life, and that is why you are here today, this morning, in order to celebrate the life of Vera. You know. I knew Vera when I was here at St. Lawrence working as a parochial vicar and the Vera's family members even as they moved to the US and even the time when they bought the house on West, I knew them and the children and uh, the husband. And only last, three, just three years before, when she was diagnosed with uh, cancer, Immediately when I knew that, when I just came and told, maybe most of you knew, Patricia was working at the office that time. I said, you know that Vera is having a little problem. So then we were trying from this parish to, to get some people who are already having the lung cancer, who are struggling in their life, so that Vera can talk with them in a way she can have some kind of hope and consolation in her life. And of course she talked with a few people. They also filled her with hope and inspiration that she can really fight for cancer or fight against this cancer. And we could really see that throughout these three years of her struggle that she was not completely discouraged. I uh, you know that at least five times I had anointed her throughout these three years in different places, and I know that at least once or twice even Father Tom anointed her and prayed over her. And whenever she had a little bit of ups and downs, when she was going for different treatment, she always came to the church and asked for anointing of the anointing of the sick. And she believed that the power of God could somehow give her strength and somehow give her hope in order to fight or in order to live with that cancer. My brothers and sisters, as I said, all of you knew Vera very well. And she was a woman who was completely filled with life, joy, because she was there for any parties. And especially, uh, I know that the Thika community knew her very well, because you guys had a lot of uh, every month masses and Christmas celebration and different celebrations. And Vera was very much involved in all those entertainment planning and uh, singing practices. And in a way, she was completely be there in everyone's life. And she was such a planner. Or she knew all the details, what is need to be done. And she encouraged and she tried to be in forefront in order to plan events and activities. And we know that when the three years, even whenever I met her here in the church, I used to ask her, how is Vera, how are you doing? Then immediately her response was practically every time very positive. She tells, okay, Father, you know, I'm having this treatment and uh, it's, uh, maybe the tumor is reducing, I think it's going to work out. So basically she was a person who was completely filled with hope and filled with her life. And even she, she also really considered others more important than herself. Even I know that two weeks ago on Sunday, I went to her, uh, Vera's house to anoint her. And even, even as I was sitting there in the living room, just before the anointing, and of course I was just eating something like a dessert. And immediately she couldn't talk that time that well. 
and she's looking at me and immediately she's telling Rodney, why don't you give her uh, napkins for Father Sandy, you know, because, you know, she's very conscious about, so immediately Rodney was not even just uh, minding that one, even the minute things, she's looking at things and uh, trying to tell everybody, so we were there, I think, some 10 or 15 people, so the family members were there. So I'm just giving a very clear example. You know, a person who is on the wheelchair, who can't speak, and maybe she might have foreseen her life is come closer to end. Maybe most of the people, that's the time, you know, we get disturbed and we are becoming upset. Even that time, the anointing time, she had that hope, she had that grace, but she is not making a complaint. Why not? Why am I? That is what she was a person. And again, it's more interesting for me also to see that when she was diagnosed with the cancer, the family, the children, the relatives, the family were always there for her. And of course, the Tipra community also. I know that they were also very much involved working with her these last two years. At least even the time I was anointed, and uh, of course, then she couldn't sit for a long time in the living room, then she was taken to her bedroom. So as I was leaving, I, I said, Rodney, okay, let me just go and say bye to uh, Vera. So as I, was, I went to her bedroom, I'm seeing one of the Tipka member just sitting on her bed, holding her hand and just massaging her, her legs and all, because she was painting. So my brothers and sisters, not simply just telling something for me, when I see that the family members or one of the parishioners or one, any of the human beings caring for a sick person or an elderly, I always go back to the gospel of uh, gospel where I get the words from Jesus Christ. Jesus told, where whenever you do to the least of my brethren, you do unto to me. We know we can listen beautiful harmonies. We can spend hours in front of the Blessed Sacrament in prayer and all kinds of devotions we can do. We need to be present in the life of someone whom we love. That is the most important thing what we, you and I can do. When we love someone or when we care for someone, it is not just uh, we say that I love you, I care for you. Of course, the words may give a kind of hope, much more than saying just words, I love you, being present in the life of that person. Holding the hand of someone to be loved and just say if we can, you and I can say that, I am for you. I love you, I care for you, I pray for you. I know how much you suffer. And I like to share your suffering, being present, looking at your face, watching your moments. That is something precious we can do as Christians, as followers of Christ. And when we do those things, definitely we know that the person, how much difference we can make in the person who is suffering. And I know that we run as a person, she has experienced the love from her own family, from her own husband, from her own two daughters, and the friends and family members whom he, she loved, whom she cared. And maybe when we celebrate a life or like a funeral mass, sometimes, you know, as human beings, there may be some occasions we start sometimes questioning about sometimes things. She was an end person. Why did she suffer? And even this morning, I was just asking with the daughters and the husband Rodney, and they were telling that, okay, my mom, she was, she was a perfect woman and she had a lot of talents and abilities, and she wanted the children to learn all her talents and abilities. But the children were telling me, the daughters were telling that father, she never forced as a mom, of course, she wants the children to excel in everything, especially in the, uh, the 
you know, extracurricular activities, you know, dance and singing and all other stuff. But she never forced the children, but she wanted them. She was an inspiration in their life, always for, uh, for their, in, their li uh, in their life. Then when I asked Rodney, the husband, he said, as in their life, after the marriage, they had been traveling for the job in different countries, living in seven countries. Can you imagine? If you just uh, live, even if you are living in one country, going to another place, it's a little hard to get adjusted. Maybe I'm experiencing now, I was here like almost seven years, and I'm in a nearby parish, but it's only seven months, I know how much struggle I do in order to get adjusted with the situation. But a, a family living in seven countries, and uh, you know, packing things, going there, and these kids need to have the education in different countries, it's not easy, but uh, Rodney told, whatever was there, Vera was an inspiration, an encouragement. She never complained why we need to go to another country, why we need to move. It was, she was always for him. Uh, she was always with him and for him. So even Rodney was feeling that was a kind of encouragement for him. He was not upset even for the work moving in different countries, but then he could uh, have that hope, he had that support from his wife, Vera. And then again, if you look at the life of Vera, one thing, even in short while, she lived the life in her fullness. And she traveled, you know, 39 countries. Yeah, so in this short span of li life, seven countries, they lived and worked, and 39 countries in the world, they traveled. So which tells us that, that they were, they loved the life, they were full of life, and they traveled, they all go also, you know, mingled with different cultures, which also was a kind of learning point for them in their life. And again, when we know about the life of Vera and reflect based on the beautiful readings what we heard, today I think we have all the reason to celebrate the life of Vera. The readings are very specially chosen. The first reading from the Book of Wisdom, you know, that beautiful reading, and I think that's one of the best reading from, from the Old Testament, especially for a funeral and all. That is from the wisdom literature. You might have heard that one. The first sentence is so beautiful. It reads like this. The souls of the just are in the hands of God. I repeat, the souls of the just are in the hands of God. When we just think about that one sentence, the first one from that wisdom literature, the souls of the just are in the hands of God. We know a Vera who had that hope in the Lord, who believed in the power of God. The souls of the just, now she died and her soul is in the hands of God. A beautiful place when we die. I always tell that, you know, as children, we always like to be in the hands of dad and mom because children know that the safest place is in the hands of the parents. But when we die, what a better place we can be. We can be in the hands of God. And that first reading beautifully goes on telling that, you know, the people who don't have faith, people who don't have hope, they think that it's a kind of end, it's a kind of punishment. But people who have hope, they think that it is God is going to bless them with immortality. My brothers and sisters, when we also reflect about the life, we know that there is only certain one thing, that is death. We don't know when it happens, how it happens. But we are certain that one day we all will die and we all need to go to an eternal home that is heaven, which is prepared by the Lord. And even the readings also clearly tells us that one. Even the second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, it tells like this, Brothers and sisters, no one lives for him or oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. 
Our brothers and sisters, when we reflect those readings, those words are very powerful. No one leave for oneself. Whatever we make in this world, the money, the positions we have, the kingdoms we build, those things we cannot, we cannot take when we go. But we know that we live for the Lord, we die for the Lord. And we also know that what we keep it by is how we live, how we touch the life of the people. That is what we keep. And again, when we come into the Gospel of today, also very clearly, the say John tells that those who believe the power of the Lord will have eternal life. My brothers and sisters, you know that Vera is in a better place. There is no more cancer, there is no more pain. But even though she is not in our sight, but what she was when she lived here in this world remains with us. And when we are able to live, not only the family members and the friends, and when we leave the values which, which we are taught us, definitely even though she is not with us, like physically, but always she lives forever in our hearts and minds. And as I conclude my homily, I was just uh, thinking and reflecting. I found a little beautiful poem in which I added some of my words. And when we hear that one, I think all of us will be filled with hope, will be filled with encouragement in our life. This is like I feel that Vera is telling all of us now from heaven and it's like her parting message for all of us and let us listen carefully. I feel your sorrow and appreciate your praise, your love and your presence today. When you are lonely, know that I am near, nearby for you, for any one of you. While I am no longer on earth, I am in a new place, a place so beautiful to describe. It is a place of peace, comfort, and love. Everyone is happy here, and there is no pain. A place so warm and wonderful, and everyone loves each other. It defies imagination. While you are sad now, you will grow in strength and hope. You can turn to me in prayer. Please do. You can continue to love me. I will watch over you, though for now, you will not be able to see or touch me. You are still on earth and meant to be there for now. You will grieve. It is in the easy. Death is always sad. But believe that someday soon we will be reunited. The place where we are supposed to be to be all that we can be with God and loved ones. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our prayers to his. Our sister Vera was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Auntie Vera seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. That those who bear the cross of pain in mind or body may never feel forsaken by God. We pray to the Lord. That God may welcome into his glory those of our family and friends who have departed this life. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd who brings rest to our souls, give peace to Antivera forever. Lord have mercy. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people, who lives, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of Vera and all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord is for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and good of all the saints of the church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Vera, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, and those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with the angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are playing. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and bread of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Vera, whom you have called from this world to your son. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 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 May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for life eternal. We are going to receive the body and bread of Christ. <coughs> I welcome all of you, those who are ready, and is ready to receive, please come. And receive, show your hand or tongue. Others can cross your arms over your chest and you will receive a blessing. So all are welcome.
whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey. Mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Vera may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
celebrate V's life. I want to give you a little flavor of V's amazing journey here on Earth. On the 5th of August 1965, uh, 49 years ago, she was born to Philomena and Kajitan Yasuza, the third of five kids, two of whom are here with us, Jeanette and Norbert. She enjoyed her role as slave to her older siblings and performed their tasks with great enthusiasm and personal satisfaction being her only payment. Also, her sister Jeanette tells me, the siblings tell me that we never had any disagreements or fights at home. I find that very hard to believe. <laughs> Maybe they've been kind or have conveniently forgotten now that she is no longer with us. Her love for soil started at a very young age. As a child, she would hand stitch doll dresses. And later on, her siblings got their very own free of charge designer outfits. She was absolutely terrified of water and never learned to swim until the end. Her fear was due to the fact that her puppy love and friend Sunil drowned while he was swimming when they were very young. Their teenage days at home were filled with parties, picnics and boys, with Veera being the most popular because of her exuberant personality, all those who know her. Uh, in the end, there was only one winner, the one and only, and there's no prize for guessing who that was. So me, I met Veer when, uh, when we were 16 years old, we were about the same age. And uh, this would never have happened if I followed my vocation of becoming a priest. <laughs> <laughs> my kids still tell me that not joining the priesthood was the best decision I have ever made in my life. <laughs> I was a friend with her brother Nopper, uh, as we were members of the Young Christian Association, uh, Students Association, sorry. I would never miss an opportunity to visit their home uh, on the third floor at Rukabai Mansion. Meeting Nopper was the excuse, because I was really interested in getting hooked up with Gil. Now that was not easy because uh, there was a lot of competition from the boys in our building and from our school St. Mary's. They were not happy at all since I lived in Dokya and they lived in Mascot. And I could not get friendly to a girl from Mascot. I was also physically threatened by a couple of guys to whom I said, let her decide what she wants to do and who she wants to go out with. I fortunately didn't get beat up. I recall vividly the day we fell in love, or what I think is the version because V is not here to confirm it. So you have to take my word for it. Uh, it was at our school graduation that we jointly held with the girls from St. Agnes. Uh, Father Jody Agrio and myself as school captain somehow convinced the nuns at, at St. Agnes to have a joint celebration, which has not happened ever again since. So we somehow conned them into doing it together. I was really nervous when I asked me to be my partner for the dance. Uh, before others did, and uh, without any hesitation, she said yes. I knew right from the beginning that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. Although I don't think she was convinced, I really can't blame her for that. We broke off our relationship for a couple of years, which I spent most of my time thinking of her. I guess the breakup was a blessing in disguise, as we later figured out that we really wanted to spend the rest of our life together. It was truly a miracle that we got back together again, and as they say, the rest is history. So we, went, we then went on to this ride that was the most amazing journey of these. We got engaged at the stroke of New York on 19, in 1991 at the dance in Baikala Mechanics, and later on, on the 18th of May, we exchanged vows at St. Agnes Church, Mascot, and had our wedding reception at Christ Church, Parish Hall. Here are some memories of me while we spent our early years in India. We's biggest love, other than me of course, was fashion designing. She mastered a craft at SNDT, a fashion designing college in Bombay. 
where she met up with her lifelong friends Andrew Rodriguez, Sri Devi Deshpande and Sangeeta Desai, all highly decorated members of the Indian fashion world. We continued to work with the friends at Garden Varelli and Benetton while we were still in India. She especially loved making costumes for kids, bridal gowns and organizing garment sales at our homes in Lokya and Washington. We had our first baby girl, now the charming young lady, Chantal, on the 7th of August, 93. We tried desperately hard to have her on the 5th of August. I was having none of it. Uh, I wouldn't be able to handle two August-born girls with the same birthday. Sean will very soon turn 22 in a few months and will be graduating from uni. Her mum was always proud of the way she has grown up, environmentally focused, very practical and always ahead on her shoulders. I believe just like a mother. When Sean was three, we left India for a six-month assignment in Wong Tao in Vietnam. It is still a mystery to this day that we, without hesitation, sacrificed a very promising career to make this temporary move to Wong Tao happen. The six-month assignment turned into 19 years of working and living in seven different countries, as Father Santi mentioned. So our memories of Vietnam, our home overlooking the statue of Jesus, the mini version of Christ the Redeemer, Sean's first day at the Slamurje School, uh, the first of nine schools that she would go to. And I'm very glad that some of our friends from Vietnam are here with us. It's been a long uh, journey, but they're still here, present with us today at Mass. So remember the wonderful parties, the family days, the picnics, the cricket matches, the hash runs, and whenever we had some free time, I actually did some work as well. Eight months later, we got transferred to Bangkok in Thailand. I still believe that Shania was conceived uh, in the re resort town of Pattaya. We remember the night very well. I have no recollection as I normally struggle with what happened yesterday. She was born Kun Shaba. That's a Thai name which means a flower. On the day after my birthday, on the 23rd of May, 1998, these water bursts just after the party got over, but I was too drunk to drive to the hospital. So Shania was born the next day. A petite little baby doll, she is still petite, only much taller and wiser now. She is in her own special way, has developed into a mature and a very loving young girl. I don't know if that's a good thing, but she is more like me than, uh, like me than me. We loved Thailand as everything was so cheap. She was the one who was always very cost effective, as you all know. Especially, uh, you know, the, the material for sewing clothes and costumes. And Thai food is the best food in the world as per the Paratas. V's favorite was Pad Thai. <clears throat> the kids still love their green curry and mine is Tom Yam. As you're probably aware, uh, no conversation is complete uh, with Indians if you don't talk about food. Uh, although technically we are Australians now. So we left Thailand to move to Nigeria. Nigeria was the most challenging assignment, but yet one of the most enjoyable ones we had, believe it or not. Living in the Slamurja camp was one of the most beautiful experiences for the kids while they were young. And for me, there was tons and tons of stuff to do, which she could even keep up with. I'm so glad that we also have friends from Nigeria here with us. That's wonderful. Visiting countries in Africa was the most enriching experience for us. The wildlife, Victoria Falls, Cape Towns, and so many other places and countries. We then planned to migrate and live in Australia for a We and the kids really enjoyed having close family around and tons of friends. And after years of a nomadic living, we thought we could settle down for good. My work and the travel work got us back on the road to Singapore after we and the kids got the Australian citizenship. This was much to the dismay of these family and friends. The folks have still not forgiven me for taking me and the kids out of their lives and the community. 
with Gina Chodhya, still angry with me. <coughs> Singapore was another wonderful assignment. We worked in a kindergarten school that she so truly loved. And as Adolf mentioned yesterday, we had so many happy memories, too many to mention. We finally came to the US uh, after five years in Singapore. Life continued to be good as we got into a regular routine that we always followed in every country we lived in. I believe every one of you knows the sequence of events in the last three plus years. We made it a point to use social media to keep all abreast of the progress and also to raise awareness and hopefully help people stay healthy and strong or even save a life. She fought a sickness with a smile, tremendous strength, and never once complained or felt sorry for herself. She went through six chemo treatments, four brain and back radiations. We were on this roller coaster ride, and unfortunately, I had more discouraging than encouraging news to give her from the scans and the visits to the doctors. We never let our spirits dampen and always focused on continuing to live our life normally as possible and do all the things that she loved doing. Working at Intermedical where she could, when she could, while she could. Her boss Marianne, who loved her very much and is here with us and was extremely kind to allow her to work at her own pace. A sewing, going on trips, costumes, doll making, food pantry, all of that continued. She was so over the moon that she could visit Australia for Jeanette and Adrian's 25th wedding anniversary. And the last trip to Europe was also very special for her. Although she was in really no real good condition to travel, she really wanted to visit the shrine of Our Lady of Fatima in Portugal, and she did. Through all this time, she never took her eyes off her children, continuing to be a good, a great mother and a mentor for them. We could not complete this journey without the tremendous love, moral support and help. So many things and prayers for you, our family and our friends, near and far, everywhere. I will not be able to thank everyone personally, as we would have to be here all day, but especially my mom, uh, Shirley, Arthur, their kids, and Jocelyn, who has who has been her guardian angel from day one, from the day she was diagnosed with the cancer. The doctors, the nurses, and all her caregivers. We had a wonderful experience, and we can't thank all of you enough. Also, thank you to Tipka. She has been part of and uh, Stella for taking the lead on organizing the last celebration year on earth, for the Santi, for the Jason, for lifting her up in faith, our deacons, our folks from the funeral home, folks who helped with the arrangements and are still helping us as we come to terms with we not being physically here with us. If I missed anybody, I'm truly sorry. Uh, special thanks to uh, also a Tipka choir who really made these last moments uh, truly special. And for continuing to honor her at the wake and the Mass. So here are some of life's lessons we learned from her. She taught us what the true meaning of being strong, especially in the face of utmost adversities in life. Surround yourself with positive energy thoughts and actions at all times. Ohana means family, and family means nobody gets left behind or forgotten. Don't worry about the past, but focus on the future, which we can control and make this world a better place. These favorite sunflower and colors, yellow, green, and purple, symbolize faith, sunshine, nature, and creativity. We'll always wear these colors to honor her in our memory. Reuse and recycle. There are many who don't have the luxuries we have. Our daughter Sean, I think, learned this very early from her mom. Bonding and community is what makes this life worth living. Use your talents to make better the lives of our less fortunate brethren. We will carry on a legacy, also me, 
as I don't have that excuse of being busy taking care of me. In the words of the very last song I sang to me before she finally let go, storms never last, do they, baby? Bad times all pass in the wind. Your hand in mine stills the thunder, and you make the sun want to shine. Our miracle child is not with us in flesh, but in spirit, and will be in our hearts forever. She has now joined her mom, papa, and younger brother Nelson, and the rest of our departed family in heaven. There was only one set of footprints in the sand, as the Lord truly carried her all along in his hands. And now, surely, she is singing and dancing in his presence. A beautiful, thoughtful, kind tribute could not paint you a good picture of who she was. But I suppose it's just the reality of the situation. She was an indescribably wonderful person and a blessing too quickly withdrawn from the lives of those she touched. She was so remarkable that the lovely things people have said about her in death sound mighty similar to things that I've grown up hearing all my life. People who happened to be seated next to her on buses or flights have raved to me about her beauty and vivaciousness. I've heard my school teachers going on about her creative flair and amazing organizational capacity. And even hours after meeting her, complete strangers feel comfortable treating her like a loyal old companion. Of course, Living in the shadow of someone as intriguing and charismatic as my mother was difficult, but I would not be the woman I am had I not perpetually strived to emulate her and absorb some of her innumerable talents. And that, I think, is a sentiment that many people, including many of you here, would probably relate to. Uh, she will be in your thoughts the next time you throw a party or plan a trip or start a creative project. And what better legacy to leave than that? to live your life in such a way that those you know will ask themselves, what would Vera do in the hopes of finding ways to enhance their own lives? And I'd like to end by thanking everyone who has been with her at every milestone of her life. Thanks to those who knew her in her youth for shaping her into the gem of the person that she was. Thanks to those we've met overseas <coughs> in our travels for helping her give Shania and I a childhood unlike any other. And a special thank you to all of you who have worked with her over the past three years. Your support, guidance, love, and not to mention food have made all the difference in the world to her and to our family. Thanks again, and may your memories of her be as sweet as she was. <coughs> the soul of Vera, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed to human weakness. 
and in your goodness grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister Vera to her place of rest. And our final song today is number 735 in your books. Blessed are they, number 735. 